Next up, we have our industry experts. Um, I didn't have the definitions up like she did, but an expert is a person who has an, uh, dang it. Uh, a person who has a authenticated and authoritative and comprehensive knowledge in a particular industry or area. And so our next experts do have that, definitely. We've got Pete DeSteiger. If you want to come up here and take a seat up here, we've got Hutch Johnson. Chris Scarborough, and every one of these guys were a lead chair at some point in time uh, along the road, and I'll, they'll give you their stories as they come up. And lastly, we have Mo Borsima on our uh, industry extra panel. We'll have uh, questions and answer period here after they give us their stories. Does that mean I'm, I got volunteered to go first? Go first. Go okay, great. To go first. <laughs> well, good. Well, thank you for having me, and I, I appreciate the invite, and excited to be here. Um, I'm not really sure that I necessarily agree with being an expert at anything. Uh, I know for sure my wife and kids would say I'm not. Um, <clears throat> I get that constantly. Um, but I am very passionate about this industry, uh, very passionate about this conference. I first attended the uh, LEAD conference in 99 in San Antonio and um, <clears throat> was really um, not sure about the industry, although I'd worked for Springfield Electric since 92. Um, this uh, conference really kind of opened my eyes to what the opportunities um, and career paths that's available to every one of us. Um, brief history on me, I started, like I said, in 92 with Springfield Electric, um, driving the truck, working in the warehouse. Um, in 91, when I graduated college from Southern Illinois University with an engineering degree, you know, I thought, holy cow, I've got this engineering degree. I'm going to go out and set the world on fire, make all kinds of money. And, and for those of us that were in that time, um, 91 was not a real good time to try to enter the job market. The economy stunk. Uh, a lot of my buddies that uh, were in the program with me went on to get their master's degree. None of us could find jobs. And I'd actually interviewed with Springfield Electric um, right before graduation. And they ended up not hiring anybody because of the state of the economy. And so I take this brand new electrical engineering degree to a company called Emerson Radio in which I sat on an assembly line repairing old VCR, the VHS VCR tapes and Emerson TVs. I'm like, wow, I spent a lot of years in college here to be a, a TV repairman on an assembly line, but that's what I did. And it was in about March of 92, I received a call um, from Mike Barker, who the five other Springfield Electric people that are in here are very familiar with, and say, hey, um, are you still interested? Are you looking for a job? I'm like, absolutely. Um, be happy to talk to you. And so we did that, and, and um, he said, here's what I'd like you to do, and, and that's what I did. So I started off working in the warehouse, like I said, and driving the truck. I uh, got the opportunity to then move into counter sales. I had to relocate, uh, which I did, and did uh, counter sales and inside sales for about two years, then received an opportunity to go back home to do an outside sales position, and did that for about four years. Um, then. Um, got the opportunity to be the branch manager uh, when I was, was 30. And you know, that, that was really a kind of a pivotal time, I think, in my career and, and really uh, that's what got me, in, that's when I was getting involved in, at that time yet and then um, became the lead conference. And again, really opened my eyes to what's available in this, in, in this industry. Uh, in 2007, we opened another location, which was great. I worked with a lot of um, awesome associates within our company to start a brand new um, branch startup, which is really cool to do. And then in 2010, um, received the opportunity to be a regional manager, so oversaw five different branches. And then last September, uh, last fall, um, Mike Barker again called me for a meeting, and this time it was at his house, and we were talking about um, retirements and all the the class of 49 that he calls it of people that are you know are retiring or potentially retiring in 2014 and 2015 and talking about that leadership transition and, <coughs> and he said and the one thing that and this goes on for like two hours okay so he said and 
we would like for you to be our next CEO of the company. Well, needless to say, I was floored. <clears throat> and, you know, because I think about within Springfield Electric and almost our 85 years with the, with a company who William Sh Schneering Sr. started the company, but we all know Bill Schneering and, and many people up here know him as well. And I'm thinking, wow, I'm getting ready to follow in the footsteps of Bill Schneering and Mike Barker. And it was quite overwhelming and still is today. So. Anyway, excited about the opportunity, excited about the people that I work with in this industry, and that's a little bit about me. Great. Great. Yeah, my name's uh, Pete Steiger. Um, we have a company uh, in metropolitan Detroit called Raymond D. Steiger Incorporated. It actually started by my grandfather uh, 75 years ago this year, so we're celebrating our 75th anniversary. I'm third generation. I have, we have uh, um, uh, fourth generation, uh, some of the members are here. Uh, my son and my, my niece are, are both here at the meeting t today, so I'm really excited to be here. I got involved with NAD, um, I've been in the industry close to 40 years, and I got involved with uh, NAD. Uh, somebody called me up and said, hey, would you like to be on this YET committee? And I said, what's that, you know? And that was in 1979. And I got on the committee, and we used to meet at the national meetings on Saturday night, you know, and have dinner and stuff. And so I got on the committee and eventually evolved to uh, when I was chairman of YET, which was actually 30 years ago this, this, this year, uh, we decided we wanted to have a standalone conference. So the following year, 1986, we had the first standalone like this. It was in Beaver Creek, Colorado, and we had uh, 200 people there. And I think, were you there, Hutch? Oh, yeah. yeah, Hutch was there. And uh, so, it was, it was, yeah. <laughs> so it was really exciting to, uh, uh, is, is of all the meetings I've ever attended, these have always been the most energetic uh, and the most fun to go to. And um, so I stayed on the committee till uh, I was uh, 40, and that was kind of the age, and then they, I think they expanded it. But we used to get around, uh, ride around on the buses and stuff and say, geez, what are we going to do once we're 40? And said, so we decided we're going to form the yays, and that's the young executives of yesterday. But uh, <laughs> so I guess Hutch and I are, are members of that. So unofficial group. Uh, but um, my experience with, um, with YET got me involved in the industry, and I was on some other committees, personnel committees. Uh, I was actually uh, chairman of YET when Bill Schneering was chairman of NAD, so uh, he, he's uh, uh, really well known in the industry. And you know, it's been a great experience to meet other people throughout the years, develop lifelong friendships and network, solve problems. Um, you can always call somebody up if you've got a question about something or you're having a problem, and and feel free to speak uh, with other people about things. So because of that, you know, I, I kept involvement. And then I was involved with the TED Advisory Group, and I was chairman of the Personnel Committee. Different things I kept getting active in, and I became a regional uh, VP about 2001. And then I was actually uh, in most spot about 10 years ago. I was national chair. So that was really an exciting year. It was really uh, my best year in the industry. I had more fun and, and met more people, and it was really exciting. So my, my advice to you is to get involved uh, with the association, with this group here, with the lead group and get active and participate and volunteer and the rewards will come back to you multi. So I'm Hutch uh, Johnson and I'm with Cadet um, Manufacturing. But that's not where I, I started. I, I started, um, I, I've been going to NAED events for I think 50 years. And uh, in my generation when we started, there were no um, fax machines. Phones were rotary. Business went in two-week increments. You'd uh, hand write a letter that your secretary would type, put in the mail, and send to your contractor. He would respond the same way, and about two weeks later, you'd get a letter back, or you'd get the quotation back, or you'd get the PO back. And then you'd go over to your Cardex system, and you'd check inventory, and you'd pull each drawer, and you'd look up the item and you'd mark everything manually. Our invoices were eight parts, so you had to push hard. And they were all manually priced. And the discounts were manually put on. So we were a generation that had a great opportunity. We had the opportunity to take this industry through the computer <clears throat> deal and computerize the industry. And back then, for our company to spend a million dollars on a computer was just, on, we, we couldn't do it. 
but we, we did, we bought three of them. One of them I bought was wrong, actually, that cost a lot of money, but. Um, <laughs> so I uh, started in the warehouse, uh, driving a forklift at 12, which you can't even do that anymore, right? And I did every job in the business, uh, all the way through. I ended up president of our business, and then we sold our business to Sonapar, and I was out of a job. I'd never even interviewed for a job before, because I was in the family business. And ended up going to actually an ex-customer who um, had a manufacturing facility in Vancouver, Washington, Cadet Manufacturing. Today it's a 58-year-old company that makes baseboard electric heaters and in-the-wall electric heaters residential. And today we are the premier residential electric heat manufacturer in the United States. And I will tell you about that, how that happened a little bit later. So I switched and I became a manufacturer and I had the opportunity to look at this industry from a different seat. And I think today we'll talk about that and what I've kind of seen uh, over the years. So thank you very much for inviting me to come and participate. Ed Walker from Frost Supply in St. Louis, Missouri. A uh, question that came up yesterday in the uh, <coughs> round tables, uh, work-life balance. Can you kind of throw that in there? I know, Chris, you've got a lot of kids. So <laughs> work-life balance, how do you guys, how did you control it? You know, how are some ways we can control it in our future? I don't have <clears throat> nearly as many kids as, uh, as uh, my Doug. buddy Doug Borchers from Dickman Supplier. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I do have an active family and, and, and you know, uh, I'll go back to really kind of an experience that I started to talk about earlier. You know, when I, whenever I uh, started as branch manager, you know, all of a sudden, in, in high school, I, I, was, I was the class clown, right? I like to have fun, I like to goof off and, 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 and enjoy life. And, and then all of a sudden, when, it, when I became the manager, uh, somewhere I lost that, um, I guess, zest for having fun. I thought a manager was supposed to be very rigid and, um, and, and really got a wake-up call from, from one of the ladies that I had worked with for a number of years, and she said, Chris, you know, what's going on? You're just not the same person that you used to be. And, you know, and, 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 and I had found myself, like Mo was talking about earlier, I really wasn't enjoying my my work life, and consequently, I wasn't enjoying my home life. Um, so, really, it, one of the things that I had to do was, you know, like the old saying is, is be true to myself. You know, I had to get back to who I am. Like to have fun. You know, I, I think that uh, you get the best out of your team um, when you're personable, when you like to have fun, when you make everybody around you want to have fun as well. Um, so I just try to balance that the best that I can with understanding that if I want to do the job as well as I can at work, then I also have to provide that same opportunity for myself after hours too. I'm, I'm a very big, um, I, I do a lot of different exercising and stay involved, but it, but it has to be something that you that you really plan for and, and focus on spending that time with your family, spending that time, whatever makes you happy. Because if you're not balanced, you're not going to do a very good job in, in either way. So, I'd like to chime in a little bit on that, too. That's such a good point. Um, one of the things that I've <clears throat> exercised at work, we all, we all have a life to balance, our family life and our business life. So what we try to do at work is, you know, that hard time from 8 to 5, not make it so rigid. Let that be somewhat flexible so that we can balance with each other. If you need some time or we need some time here, I'll cover you here. You go do that with your family. I'll be here to cover you. We have a lot of dialogue that way to try to share some of that work balance effort that we're all trying to do. So that's been very helpful for us. Yeah, in, in my life, uh, my family's always come first. Um, you know, uh, w when it's all said and done at the end of my life, I want to be able to look back and not have missed anything with my family. And so I always made it a priority uh, in my work life to take time out, carve time out, get coverage for me so that I could attend all my kids' dance recitals and track meets and whatever sporting events they were in or whatever. And I really, for me personally, my personal values, that's where they were. 
and I've been able to, fortunately, with uh, you know the business we're in, been able to work that flex time similar to what Mo has just described. And, and I really think it's important for people. I've seen people um, become workaholics, and, and later in life, I've, I know one ind individual particularly very successful, made millions and millions of dollars, but you know, even confessed to me later on that he really missed big opportunities with his family, and now he's suffering for it later in his life. So I, I don't want to be in that spot. So my advisement to you, if, I mean, if, share, if you share those values, to do your best within your own, you know, whatever structure and restrictions, to try to work around those things and try to take advantage of enjoying your family life when you can. And we do that for the whole company. I, the, our culture is family first. And we have flex time. Uh, the I issue is you need to get your work done, and you can figure out when that is, and depending on the season and, and kids' school. We have a wellness program. I mean, our employees' health is very important to them and, and to the su success of the business. And so uh, um, you need people. Uh, uh, if you're not healthy, you, you won't do a good job at either your family or your business. And um, so we think as a business, we can help people with that. And uh, it's all about family first. That's the, the number one thing.